like a razor bracket. Like it's like fifty dollars, but still. Oh yeah, where? Your mini map is Wait, what? super tiny. <laughs> Wally it off. So hard to see what's. I mean, where you are exactly. Ah uh, yes yes. Can you I change think, that? The reason I think. Yeah, you can zoom in. Oh, I'm. I think you said it was like ten percent or something. Something yeah. pixel. Yeah. The only thing you could do is just set your minimap to be not centered so that you see your whole minimap at all times. But yeah. It like it doesn't have to be centered on you, right? Like it's like half half of the minimap circle is kind of just white space or empty space. Yeah. Peter, not from my actual headset. That's what oh, it was. Oh yes, like last that's time. that's that's the that's very much the reason. Okay, I'll pause here. Let me ask you, what are you thinking? Uh, here I was thinking, um, I'll wall it off, sit on top of the wall, get a pick, and then drop down and play with my team. Okay. What else? Or is that it? What? Is That's that it? it. Anything else? Okay. So we're planning to put a wall up, and then when you when are you going to put the wall? Like... Right away, within um, seconds. When I hear footsteps, because if they go A, I want to be ready to rotate and not waste a wall. Okay, makes sense. So, okay, so you're planning to make this play. You're going to wait for footsteps. If, if well, What happens if there's no footsteps? Um, I'm going to cancel the wall and then push with my team to A. Okay, so we're going to rotate to A early. Okay, so we're going to make this play with this wall. If, if we hear people who shoot at the wall, then we're going to peek off the wall. Then uh, the only caveats, I guess, is that while you're doing this play, you're technically exposed to arcade. Yeah. So what do we do if someone goes arcade? Um. I, I guess die because I wasn't really <laughs> thinking about that. I okay. mean, hope my team can get him or alert me before he gets to kill me. Okay. Yeah. So you do have to rely on your team to some extent, where. You can you can still go for this play. You just have to be really careful that this entire time you'll be exposed to arcade. So you have to be really cognizant of like where your other two players are, where your cipher is set up, where your sky is set up, so that if hopefully one of them is watching arcade, maybe someone's on tower watching arcade for you, so that you can do this play without having to worry about getting shot in the back. Yeah. All right. All right. So let's see how this plays out. So right away, if you notice that, well, besides that, we got to kill, that Cypher is watching our cage for us. So it's good. Well, let's pause here. Let me ask you, what are you thinking? Um, I was mainly thinking, um, what, how I want to approach going to A site. Like, if I just want to push in, or if I want to stay back and watch the one door. Which, which door? Like the, um, the door from Ropes? The opening one. I don't know. Okay, so let's okay. clarify. Let's go to a map. Okay, can you see the screen? Yeah, I see it. All right, so this is Fracture. We're originally on B, and actually right now we're in one canteen. All right, so we're in canteen, yeah. and then we're thinking about rotating. Where are we going to go? Um, I rotated... Um... Where did I go? I went to B Link, didn't I? You want to go to B Link? You want to go to yeah. here? Oh yeah. Why is that? Um, because it leaves you less open to anyone pushing arcade, but that. If some, so you're worried if someone comes, uh, someone pushes some arcade. Yeah, because I knew there was someone, um. A, because I ran and got a kill, so I was assuming they were going to push A, so I wrapped around. Okay, well, to there. if they're going to push A, then what's the point of playing from B-Link then? If you're worried, of, because if they're either gonna put, you're worried about pushing out someone pushing a kid, or you're worried about someone pushing A. Mm. Right, so then what does this position do? It does absolutely nothing. And honestly, it kind of hurts the team. <laughs> okay. Um, so, 
you you have the kind of idea that's you want to do something that something has happened across the map that your your Reyna killed someone at dish she she killed someone maybe she's pushing dish or whatever and then maybe your other person your viper is like has her wall on on Amy or something and then she's playing she's soloing sites and you have the idea that something is happening across the map maybe we should do something and you could go here you could play B link but there's no real point to do that because we saw that our cipher was already in tower and he's already watching the entirety of, of arcade like all the way through the bench basically so if you're worried about an a push then if you, you can just like rotate through ropes and like watch door or you can work if you're really paranoid if you're really sure for whatever reason that they're going to be pushing you home and you come you can set up a crossfire you set up in the like a link here to your stage you set up in a link and then you tell your viper hey viper let's crossfire viper was like okay let's crossfire she's going to go to these stairs and she's going to you guys are going to crossfire with this entrance here yeah that would have been the smarter thing to do i think yeah. i ended up I actually don't know what I did because I can't remember because short term memory loss. Okay, so this is one option that if you would have been a push, you set up with your Viper or you set up wherever wherever it needs help, whichever part of A needs help the most, and then you seek to get value that way. The other option that you have is that you think there's an A push, so well, I'm already, uh, you were like standing here, you were preparing a wall for B main, you suspect there's an A push if they're going A, that means they're not, they're not going to be B, right? So how about, as Sage, how about we just, like, we just push B stairs? So this is another option. Yeah, because then if they did do an A push, you'd be behind them. Right, exactly. And then you, as you're pushing, you gain more and more things, right? You gain information for your team, you gain information that there's people that's not B stairs, you gain information that's people not B tunnel, and then you continue pushing, you gain information, oh, there's nobody to spawn. You continue pushing, right? As you keep pushing, the more you push, the more information you get. And then as you, you're pushing through these areas, you clear outside of B, you clear T spawn. Eventually, you maybe you clear your hall or something. Let's say no one is here, then you can confirm to your team, hey, they're all, like, all of B is clear, they're all going to be dish. Or they're all going to be arcade, possibly, right? There's only two like remaining possibilities, right? Yeah. So one, you gain information. Two, you gain map control. So let's say you had your, your sky here and your sky. And she's like, oh, my stage is pushing. Let me push with her. And now you guys have control of, of, of uh, B tree, B main. Then sky is like, oh, well, I have all this map control. Maybe I can go B tunnel now and go on like a different flank. Yeah. Right, so you also gain more, more angles. Like more angles and more map control for your team, which then converts to more options. So in, in Sky, like as Sky, instead of her like, oh, I need to play Sight. No, I don't need to play Sight. I can, I can play all these random angles now. I can like go through B tunnel. I can like push through T spawn. Right? I don't. Th and if also freeze the resources as you're pushing through B B main, and that that means that this guy no longer has to watch B main. Instead, she'd be like, oh, I can just turn around. Let me go help my Cipher. Help my Cipher watch arcade. Oh, Cipher is already on tower. Maybe I come this way. And I can set up another crossfire without having to worry at all. From someone coming B main. Yeah. But of course, like every every decision that you make, like has trade offs, right? So, the you have all this great reward, but it comes with a risk that because you're you're pushing, you're playing aggressively, and most likely you'll probably be pushing by yourself unless you ask someone to come with you. That you could potentially die, possibly, or you might possibly find yourself in a good fight that you don't want to take, possibly. So that's the risk. So I'm not going to say that uh, whichever of these options is right or wrong, but just presenting them, presenting them as, as options. And each option always has their own trade-offs, pros and cons. I'll say just realizing that it's an option helps a lot more. Yeah. All right, any questions so far? No, not really. OK. All right, so let's go back to the video. Sharing. You'll see. All right, so Taylor, play this out. Cypher, I'm pretty sure it's not. B. So we go. Actually, let me back a bit. So we decide. Cypher, I'm pretty sure it's not. So Vepu spots someone in a hall. 
I get silver darted. Tiny detail here is that I'm pretty sure. you're rotating. You should be. You should feel pretty safe that CT CT spawn is like completely clear. There's no way anyone can be CT spawn unless the viper is dead or unless they somehow sneak through the door. In which case, you're probably gonna peel the door open. So when you know that the area is like completely safe, you should just run for knife out as fast as possible. Yeah. Right? Your goal is to rotate. Then you should just rotate as fast as possible. Oh, like you see the sky. The sky is like just bunny hopping with a knife out. Pass here. Let me ask you, what are you thinking about this ice? What am I thinking? Um, I was that I was gonna slow it and that I was gonna push up a little more until the Viper showed up and then I was gonna try to kill her. So you, you worried about the someone coming from doors? Yeah. Okay. What else? I'm um, worried about someone coming from doors is kind of the main thing that I can okay. think of. Okay, so you worry about someone coming from doors, it's reasonable. I'd say that probably the highest priority right now is helping your Viper, because your Viper is already in a gunfight, or was in a gunfight. So she, already she spotted someone, already she's getting darted. So the highest priority right now is like, help the Viper. And actually your, your Vayner turned around, so okay, so now you have two people, three people now with this guy. You throw ice here, which opens the door, by the way. So you don't want to turn your turn away from the door. Yeah. And uh, besides the ice, the other thing you could do is that you can just straight up just wall wall the door, and that would help your team like isolate angles. Yeah. So that way, like your team can all focus on aiming that one choke yeah. point, as opposed to worrying about some people opening door. Yeah. The other option is that if you wanted to save your wall, in order to cover this angle, like help your team feel safe, so that you just sit like you sit on top of ropes, like just stand here and just wait, wait for the door to open, and then you can choose like try to do like a timing peek, for example. Yeah. So to clarify what I mean by that, like you want me to clarify. So say you st you're standing here, right? Can you see this? See this? Yeah. Ice? You're standing here. You you're not in line of sights. The door opens. Then someone like walks through, pushes through, whatever. Then they start getting to like around this area, like this area, and mm -hmm. then that's the time you you peek out and you catch them while while they're too busy like too busy clearing this angle or they're too busy starting to like have the crosshair placed elsewhere onto onto site. Yeah. So that's what I mean by sort of like a timing peek. Instead of like directly standing here in the open, looking directly at the door, as soon as the door Hide. opens, like, yeah, the, the, as soon as it opens, this is like the first angle that anyone's going to look at. They're, they're going to look at the top of ropes. And then when they clear it and see that I'm not there, they'll continue pushing, clearing the other angle. Right. And then, yeah. Okay. So again, different options of how you want to approach this. Icing is one option. The only caveat is that you be, because you, you're throwing ice, which opens the door, then you're going. You're more likely to find stuff in a gunfight. So yeah. just be careful about that. And then again, that uh, you'll be in this gunfight like by yourself because the rest of your team is focused on the rest of A main. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So back to we'll see. I'll hear you up. Oh. Don't pick this, don't pick this. Just wait for your heal. Yeah, they're oh, definitely okay. hitting. I'll stay, I'll stay just in case. Let me pause here. Let me ask you what are you thinking? Um, I heard our teammate call out they were rotating, so I was thinking I was gonna go back and do the original play that I was thinking of, which is falling off um whatever it's called. Uh, be long, I think it is. I don't know. Yeah, be stairs. Okay. Yeah, I was going to wall it off and just do the original plan. Okay. The, the only thing, like, like I don't really like using Sage Wall too much on uh, on B because, because there's so many entrances to B. They can go Arcade, they can go B Tower, and they can go B Stairs. And even if you wall off B Stairs, they could still very quickly like rotate through Tunnel 
and then end up in arcade. And then which they have two more angles that they have access to. Yeah. So it's a different story compared to if there's some site or some choke that, that the enemy has to go through, like one single choke that they have to go through. For example, like a drop, for example. If someone is pushing dish and you wall off drop, then they, they have to push this wall. And they have to yeah. they have to deal with the wall. Yeah. Okay. But uh, okay, so we decided to go with this wall play. Not a bad idea. I don't think Cypher knows what they're doing. Just be careful about arcade. What? No one's watching arcade right now. Pay attention to the minimap. Okay, so we're gonna take a quick peek. No one's arcade temporarily. Spike down A. Oh my god, you killed him. 30 seconds left. Precisely. One enemy remaining. What is this unusual behavior? Good job, what a great Ten seconds left. What is this guy doing? Uh, he was probably, he was probably like, oh, jump, jump okay. clicker. Not bad so far. Get set up. Let's see, what are we about? Oh, wait. What are we about anything? What are you thinking? Uh, here, I was thinking, someone needs to shoot out the Sova dart and that I need to keep watching, um, I mean, B stairs. What do you think about your economy? Um. So you bought... You bought utility and then you bought jump clicker 2.0. shields. <laughs> yeah. Are you gonna wall this up against? Why is that? What are you thinking? Um, I'm thinking I feel pretty okay with using the classic in a fight, and that I just bought some shields to make sure I stay alive longer. If that makes sense. Okay. And um. um... Usually, if you if you take this kind of gamble, because it's basically a gamble, right? You don't know if the enemy team is, is gonna force buy, and then like say if the enemy team force buy specters or something, or even by the, maybe the force buy Aries, then it's like now you have a classic versus Aries. And now there's no way you're gonna win that fight. Okay? Yeah, no. So, so it's a slight gamble. You're gambling that they're going to full save and that you can get away with going just the classic for this round in particular, so that hopefully, usually, you take this gamble usually so that in the future rounds that maybe you're saving for an op, or maybe you're saving for a rifle on, on third round or something like that. Right, that would be the, the usual reason to, to full save on second round after you win pistol round. Yeah. Otherwise, if you're not going for the, either of those two things, or if you're not aiming to become like aiming to be like a, a frugal player on your team then most of the time it's better to to buy yeah you can buy smg you can buy shotgun whatever or yeah whatever like basically whatever you want and then sort of seek to bonus that onto third round yeah all right so that's the usual play and okay so we decided to full save then when we decide to do this, our play style needs to change. Like we can't play our normal angles, and we also need to be really cognizant of where our teammates are, especially the ones that that do have guns. Right. So, how the enemy team like wins an eco round? Assuming the enemy team like equals this round, how they win this this round is that they'll kill the, your teammates that do have the good guns. Like say if you're a surfer or your sky like. Let's say either one of them has like a Spectre in Ares, right? And then they take the take one run somewhere across the map and they die. And then the enemy team picks up that gun. Now it's like it's significantly more likely for the enemy team to win that round. Okay. Right, makes sense? Yeah, that makes so, sense. In order to prevent that, we want to ensure that wherever those those teammates are with the big guns, that they that we're, that we're that we're near them as much as possible, so that if they take a gunfight, we we can be there to betray them out. Or if they if they were to die, then we'll be there to pick up the gun. Make sure that gun does not fall into enemy hands. 
Yeah, so you're like the backup protecting the teammate, basically. Mm, something like that. Kind of. So it's it's mostly just like adjusting your playstyle. Given given the situation where the situation is that you're full saving, your team has one pistol round, so most likely some of your teammates, if not all, are going to be buying guns, Spectre, Ares, whatever. And then your your one of your goals for this round is to ensure that those guns don't fall into enemy hands. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so the way that we do that is that we need to press tab a lot. So hopefully, let's see, while we are in buy phase, or even just looking at teammates. So we see Cypher, Viper have pistols, and Sky has a Spectre. And then we're not sure about uh, the other person in the arena. I was asking if you are, if you were. Okay. Let's see, do we turn around? Maybe not, it's okay. So, step one is that it's, it's, it's like building up this awareness, right? Where you need to check who in your team has has the guns. Like, what, what loadout is my team rolling out with? And second thing is that where are these are these uh, teammates positions? So, for example, if we find out that Reyna uh, bought a Spectre, or maybe let's say she, she took a huge game and she bought a Phantom, right? And then we see that she's positioned aggressively across the map on the uh, dish, that she's based on her body language automatically I'm thinking that she just ran as if she had a fam she's gonna be pushing pushing dish and then looking for one ones looking for one me twos or whatever looking for engagements right yeah and, and then taking those because of how she's positioned right now and uh if that were the case then I need to like get over there ACP I want to make sure that when my Rainer takes takes that engagement she's not alone or that if my Rainer dies that that phantom that phantom that she might buy does not fall in enemy hands. Yeah. Think of it as protect the president, but with a phantom. Yeah, something like that. Okay, uh, so right now we only know for sure that our sky has a big gun. She has a specter. Everyone else has pistols. And uh, that means that we want to help our sky as much as possible. If our sky gets in a gunfight, hopefully we can help shoot it out, or we can pick up Respector. Yeah. Okay. So that's what we're looking for this round. Looks like uh, right now you're just looking to make the same play, which is fine. So let's we'll see how this plays out. Ah, uh, yes. Right, see, actually... Okay, I don't hear your comms, so I don't have any... Okay. Can't uh, uh, yes. critique your comms, so I guess I'll skip it. Right, bitch. Go away. But I can sort of see. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. Like here, you're saying okay. something. Let's get set up. Then, so basically, I'm looking for as soon as you hear noise from the team that you comment to to the enemy to to, uh, yeah. to your teammates. Ah, uh, yes. Basically, right here, right. Right yeah, here. it should have been like there be or something. Okay, so let me ask you, like in this situation, let's say yeah, like yeah. Uh, I'll play for a few seconds. Ah, uh, yes. Right. And then you wall. Okay, so in this situation, what would you come to your team? What would you say? Probably, um, they're pushing B. Um, they might rotate. That's kind of what I would say. Okay. So I would say for, for comms, you want to be as specific as possible. Specific and um, as, as, yeah, as specific and detailed as possible and short as well. So you, you basically want to say that not just, oh, there be, but you want to say how many are be. Well, we hear at least two. So we should say at least two be. But then, we'd, but then because B has multiple entrances, we don't want to just say B in general because let's say you're... Uh, your Viper, who's 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 uh, on the CT kind of link connector right there, that if she if you just say like two B, then she doesn't know if there be stairs or if there be arcade. Yeah. So then what you should say is is to be as specific as possible and say at least two coming B stairs, or at least at least two pushing B stairs. Yeah, that makes sense. So that lets your the rest of your team know, like, okay, worst case, there's three people elsewhere. 
maybe those three people are arcade, maybe those three people are a-hole, who knows. But we know that for sure there's at least two people coming B-stairs. And then as you get more and more information, maybe you hear some utility, maybe you see some utility, whatever. Or better yet, if you hear specific footsteps, right? So like if you hear Breach's footsteps are distinct, like they're different from like Sova's footsteps or Viper's footsteps. You know, like, like Breach sounds like heavier, same thing with like Brim, his footsteps sound heavier compared to a Jet or a Phoenix or a Sage. Then you can be like really specific, then you can be like, oh, Breach's B-stairs, Breach and someone else's B-stairs. And then, like, like, like these things like lead to, lead, think, lead, um, lead to more and more better decisions that your team can make. So, for example, if you were to say breach stairs or breach pushing B stairs, then let's say you're Reyna who's uh, on dish right now. She's pushing dish. Then she no longer has to worry about a breach flash because breach cannot possibly be at dish. We just heard breach at B stairs, so that makes her push like easier to perform. She doesn't worry about a flash and having to do like a 180 degree turn to look look, look away from the flash. Instead she can like she can push with confidence, right? We'll push without having to worry about getting flashed. Yeah. Okay. So bullet points is uh be specific with your comms. Or be as specific as possible with your comms. Okay. So, let's see uh, how it yeah. plays. Viper. Go away. Oh, wait. Oh, no, there, there. You should also come that uh, the Viper world B, the break in your wall B, and also this whole time. Again, you want to be really careful about Viper. focusing heavily on B stairs because this entire time, no one's actually covering your arcade. The Cypher is camera right now, and this Viper is like looking at nothing. And then the sky looks like she has a god or something. Oh wait. Yeah. Oh, no. Right, so like actually in this point right here, like someone could peek you from arcade and you're not actually um, up in there. Yeah, I'd die. Oh, there you yeah. So it's not until around this point. I'm pausing here specifically because this is the point that Cypher actually does peek arcade. Now your arcade is covered. So the the lesson from this is that you want to pay attention to your minimap as much as possible, pay attention to your surroundings, pay attention to your teammates, so that you know when you, when you are and are not vulnerable to certain angles. Yeah. Okay. Blank right now. Actually, I think I would have just kept that the... Uh... Put that thing there. Hey, you actually decided to break the, the chamber thing, but I actually would have just kept it because I think it blocks his teammates from using that corner. Yeah, that would have been smart. But, any detail. Also, chamber is dead, so you don't really gain anything by breaking it. So, just kind of spending bullets. Right, the big black guy like 50 times. Great. At this point, you should come to your team that they've, they've given up their B push or they're no longer pushing B. And either they're holding B or they're falling back to rotate A, for example. Yeah. So if you were to come that, I I'd probably expect them to, to rotate to A. Then that will allow your Reyna. See your Reyna. Right, the big black guy like 50 Reyna and someone else, actually. Great. Yeah, your Reyna is actually like knifing the other Reyna. Okay, so so that will like give your, your Reyna a heads up that the, they're no longer like hard committing to B. Now they're more likely to fall back. And then that gives that would give your Urena a good opportunity to catch people mid rotation. Yeah. All going down. Reloading. Bro, Urena is just throwing the other Urena. She looked to hear your cipher ACP. Uh, too late. Just Any detail arena. is that as Sage or as as a healer in, in general is that you should pay attention to one of your team or one of your teammates gets into engagement and survives, right? So yeah, I always pay attention to like, whenever they get to a gunfight. I expect them that they probably took some hits, and then if they were to survive, they probably took some hits, and I, I should heal them ASAP. Bro, Rena is just throwing the other Rena. 
So right there, like, I hear Sekfer, he's in a gunfight. He's fighting someone at Arcade. And just looking at the top of the screen, he took, like, I don't know, half his health or whatever. That I should yeah, I should have healed him. Yeah, maybe I, maybe I could have kept him alive. Who knows? Okay, you know there's two arcades. Right, right there, right there. Last two arcades. Yeah, be really careful about pushing by yourself. I'll see your cross here is nowhere. nowhere I'll say, it. in that situation, I was not expecting him to be up there, but my crosshair placement was. Whew, not good. Right, right there, right there. Yeah, it seemed like he was walking up the stairs. But yeah, in either case, you should just always keep your, your crosshair head level. Yeah. So, like, where the enemy can be. Nah. Yeah, but I'm trying to get back into Valorant. So. Yeah, bro, I just got back into it like a few months ago. I'm coming for you, Sabine. Months. Are you? Let's see what the team has. Expected two phantoms and a pistol. Let me ask you, what are you thinking about the spec you're buying? <sighs> about the stuff I'm buying? Yeah. <clears throat> so, why buy Spectre? Uh, I feel uh, confident in the Spectre, and I wanted to save some money for next round. Mm, okay, so so like a half buy? Yeah. Okay. Seems reasonable. Um... Are you? Let me ask you: Are you gonna play the same spots, or are you gonna play anywhere? Same else? spot. Same, same spot? spot. Okay. Yeah. So the the only thing I'd be worried about is that again the same play that you're exposed to arcade, and the specter is really good for close range. So you're really good. You're in a really good position to to hold uh, B stairs because it's a close range angle. You can play off your wall. Great. All good things. The only issue is that if someone were to come arcade, that you might find yourself in a long range gunfight. In which case, that you're probably gonna lose it, like almost guaranteed, if they have uh, any sort of rifle. Yeah. So again, you'd be like really, you have to be really careful that uh, your your team is is covering for you while you while you perform this play. Yeah. Okay. The second thing, um, semi what about? It's not a huge deal for now. Is that this is like you've already done this play. The new team has is has already seen this this wall play, and they're probably gonna expect you to be on the wall. Yeah, to do it again, yeah. So just be careful about that. So if you decide to make the exact play again for the second round in a row. Yeah. Okay. Months. Are you alting? No. Uh, right, come to your team, you hear two from the stairs. No, they definitely yeah, don't get Oh, it's because that reset, right? Okay, good idea, like this position. Only oh, issue again, no one's watching our trade. And you see that actually, right? This guy tucked himself into the corner to isolate a 1-1 with you, right? And looking yeah. specifically above the wall. So, like, this is already, like, some body language from the enemy team that says, like, yeah, I know exactly what this play is, I know exactly what to expect. So, be careful yeah. about repeating plays like this over and over. I'm wolfing. They're, they're deep, they're deep in, they're deep. Nice. Reloading. They're either gonna, they're probably gonna rotate, they're rotating. Yo, that's a really nice skin, Major. Thank you, sir. Bora Bora. Planted. Oh, they're on site. Oh, there would be. Oh my gosh. Dude, yeah, I made that mistake. Shot. What the heck? Wait, how did she shoot? Is that hacks? Yeah, she has hacks. Um, <laughs> Hopefully this is where we were talking about. They, they had a Reina that was AFK and just jumping the entire game. What do you mean? Um, like when the Reina earlier in the game. I think it was uh, 
first round or whatever, when our arena was behind the arena. Um, half of the game, I think. No, only like four or five rounds. The, their arena was just AFK jumping in the same spot. Okay. And uh, and then I think the arena had just gotten back and shot our cipher, and that's what why he said that. Okay, but um, I'm more so focused about why we're staying A here. Um, I got... I, I don't know. I think I just misheard it. And then our Viper started shooting, so I was like, oh, they're definitely A. And then they weren't there, so I ended up going yeah. back to A. Or B. Yeah, I think uh, probably just need to get better headphones. Yeah, trust me, I know I do. Oh, they're on the B. Now we're super late, and there's no way we can defuse. So, best case, we could probably just get exit kills. Probably, yeah, watch out. Uh, yeah. yeah, we're just not checking all the angles. Yeah, not checking the angles. At this point, oh, once you the hear, hear the bomb like, get to this this faster ticking rate, probably, yeah, watch that, out. unless someone's like already on the bombs, like, you're not going to be able to defuse it. So, yeah. your next best bet is to go for exit kills. Make sure that the two last remaining enemies are not able to survive and save their guns. Yeah. So I think uh, instead of like trying to push onto the site like by yourself, instead just, just go arcade, help Urena, ensure that no one can leave from from ropes. Meanwhile, yeah, you can, you can let your your viper cover B stairs. Yeah, so they don't get to save their guns. Yeah. Oh, that's fine. But I at least scored it. Cypher. Never mind. Multiple enemies A. My wall's going down. Off your feet! Well, we gotta speed up ASAP. I'm actually surprised that the enemy team has not uh, taken AZ. I'm moving. At this point, now you guys can just push. Oh, uh, right there, right there. Corner. Corner, corner. Uh. So I don't need to take this 1v1. Also, here, I actually did something. Just take the vandal, just hide. Oh, that's a really good time Buddy just ran I'll say, that's what I was saying in comms, but you can't hear for whatever reason. Yeah, so there I think you, uh, you just kind of post too many engagements. So, going back to this, that, uh, we're gonna around, okay, we're making the same play, we don't hear anything B, and at some point, Piper says multiple A, you get a free orb. We're pushing, by pushing we're clearing, we're clearing B stairs, we can tell our team, hey, they're not B, you can guys can watch it early. Off your feet! As soon as I hear a breach roll, I'm thinking, okay, this is a hard execute onto A, like, whoever's A is gonna get stunned, they're just gonna get rushed on. At this point, I think, yeah, we need to speed up our, our push to ACP. And then, around this point, now the ult is over, now somehow your team at A are still alive, so then... The, the push that was on A has now effectively been stopped. So either they're they're sitting around A hall, or they're thinking about turning around, and going back to B, or going somewhere else. So this is the point where you no longer want to play fast. Now you want to play slow. Maybe you start walking. Yeah. Maybe you just like wait around the corner and wait for more information about what your team hears or sees, or what you hear or see. Yeah. Then we get to the spots, so it's good. So you guys started walking, you realize that okay, the pace of the matches has slowed dramatically. Oh, uh, right there, right there. There's a good kill. Corner. And then let's see, actually. Oh, uh, right there, right there. Corner. Guess, yeah, we were too focused on trying to kill. At this point, you just hide because you, you, you and your Viper have this guy trapped, and like they have to go one of two ways. Either they push you, Viper. Opens door shifts in the back, or they go like push onto A. 
which is like more uncharted territory. They don't know if, if A is clear or not. And then if they if they were to go A, like if, if Solo like leaves you alone, then you get a free res. So overall yeah. it's like there's no incentive for you to really take this gunfight with the sofa. Yeah. Especially as on defense. You you basically don't have to do anything, just wait for the enemy team to make a move. The other alternative is that if you if you really intend on making a play, then I would just wall off this sky and then res her. And yeah. That'd be like a more guarantee, like almost guaranteed to win the round as 4v2. Right? Yeah. But here we keep peeking, we keep peeking. One enemy remaining. Spike down. Buddy just ran and like right here, like there's no point just playing to this wall. Like your your gun yeah. is like like a pistol, like a pistol, right? Versus I don't know, it seems like Ares, and that Ares is gonna do full damage to you compared to your Spectre does like nothing. Yeah. So I think you probably could survive if you just like ran away. Ran, yeah. Thirty seconds left. Yeah. I'd have my Let me pause here. And you have any questions so far? Um, no, not really. <clears throat> Wait, is it bad to have my FPS on the limited? Kill them. Uh, well, unless it's running really. Mm. You should comp your team to be stairs, breach stun be stairs. Exactly why this, this play is getting too predictable. Yeah, I should have realized that, but I didn't, so. I mean. Like the way this spawning language, right? The way this breach peaks, he doesn't look at anything else, he just looks directly to the top of the wall, exactly where you're where you standing. And he just takes this 1v1. So actually, this this is no longer like an unpredictable spot where, like, you think that, oh, I, I can spray this wall freely, right? That instead they just know that, oh, this wall goes up, I can take a 1v1, like, isolated 1v1 with the Sage. Because I know that she's going to be there, and that no one else on her team is going to be able to help her. So this is actually yeah. Yeah, a nice little one, one that you, you typically don't want to take. Actually, it becomes a good one because the chamber trees you up, trees them out. It's all good, continue. Kind of carries. Is his first ring match this act? You should check your team's loadouts or team, team's economy and you should ask your site Someone before drop. This, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I can buy you. Oh, your 200 frame, uh, frames a second couldn't catch up. Your 200 frames. Can someone get this? Thank you. So your Viper buys you. You should actually yeah, you should you. actually sell that and oh, tell your cipher specifically to, frame, uh, yeah. tell your cipher specifically to buy it because he has the most money. Dang, bro. Shut and lock the door. <laughs> you want husband. to play? Let's play. So what? He's my husband. Hey. Where are you two? Here. He's my hubby. <laughs> What's wrong with that, bro? Like, Loki, nothing. Hashtag discrimination, aka. Uh, and. Nick, 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 Hmm. And I got stopped by chamber because I didn't expect that. Hmm, okay. Yeah. So generally, pushing, especially after you you burn your stage roll, is is like pretty high risk. That you would only want to do it if you especially have like a really good read that you're trying to catch someone off guard, or you have a really good read that then they're no longer at, at, at B stairs. That they that they hard rotated to go A, or they hard rotated to go B tunnel. So, okay, so we worry about. So we took a huge risk here. Didn't cut uh, it off. One. What is it? Lagging so bad. 
We are fighting. You having a fast computer, cause you know, like you know, when it cuts, you know, it cuts for a long time. Hopefully, yes. I'll you dog, but yes, we'll suffer for drop. We, we I don't know, know, it's kind of a paradox. Like for <laughs> no, uh, I'm 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 duoed with uh, little man. Yeah, I, I'm just like a really, you know, I vibe with people really well. Yeah, clearly, clearly. Let me pause here, let me ask you, what are you thinking? Um, I was thinking, well, I was hoping that our sky would push, get a kill, back up, I could wall it off, and then we could rotate, but... Okay, what else are you thinking? Um... That if um, if our sky ends up dying, that I just wall off anyway, and that would give, and that would just block off an angle. Okay. Anything that's else? That's it. No, that's it. Okay. So a couple other things besides the the sky fact that uh, you're right now is alone on a site. I know she's ulted, but she's basically alone on a site. Also, every single round so far that both your team sentinels, you and the cypher, have been stacked on B, which is typically a bad idea, but. And it seems like the enemy team has not really punished you for it. It's like, if the enemy team was smarter, they would realize, oh, both, both center is on B. Let me just go every every single round and not have to deal with Cypher Trips, not have to deal with Sage Wall, Ice Slow, etc. Yeah. So I might consider, instead of playing B this round, set I'll go A instead to help our Rena. Yeah. Unless we're really confident that Rena can solo hold A site. Okay, so that's something I'm thinking just that the, as the round started. The other thing I'm thinking is that this guy is pushing or starting to push B stairs. I uh, vibe with people really well. Yeah, clearly, clearly. Right, starting to push B stairs. She walks past your, your, your wall on the ground. And that, uh, so, okay, so we realize that this guy is pushing and we have some ideas about what we should do that we can, well, at least some ideas that we can do that we can. Uh, wall as soon as she dies, or we can wall after she gets killed. But instead of that, instead of like, instead of like, kind of sitting here, because this is more of, more of a passive play. Like, the the round is being dictated not by you; it's being dictated by the sky. Like, you're begging the sky to land your shots and win the one v one, right? Yeah. But what if she doesn't win the one? What if she dies? What if she runs into a one v two and and she dies, right? Then, yeah. Then you, you sort of fall back to your, your default passive play where you, you wall, you play off your wall, then new team is probably going to expect the wall again, and then they're going to fight another isolated 1-1 one -one with you, right? Yeah. So instead of that, try to be more proactive. Try to join the fight whenever possible. So we see that our Sky is looking for a fight. She's probably going to get into a fight pretty soon. And then if she does get into a fight, and when she does, that... We want to be there to help her out ASAP. Yeah. Whether that's with utility that we have, or whether that's just us with our gun out, being there to trade her out, or being there to to force who who fights to become a two v one. Yeah. Okay. So additionally, besides uh, training her out, the other thing you could do to help her out is that you can be much much closer for like much more much uh, much better position to get a res off yeah so in case if you're not really that confident and going for the trade maybe a couple of seconds late they've already or there's you get you've uh, heard gunfire from two or three different people or whatever and you're not confident that you need that you get you're able to take to trade those people out then you'll be at least you'll be closer to consider going for a res maybe you can wall and res or maybe you can wall res and then bait the res and that if they spray the wall plus play sky then you can do the exact same play that you're originally thinking that you uh you do you're standing on top of the wall and then you catch them off guard while they're shooting something else right either while they're shooting the wall or while they're shooting your sky yeah right so you'll be accomplishing kind of the same the same similar kind of play but in a much more proactive fashion where now you're you're guaranteed to get value off the wall or you're guaranteed to get value like ACP as opposed to um, banking on your sky to get value for you. Yeah. Right. So I would say for, for this bullet point, number three, try to uh, play aggressive. 
whenever you see your teammates playing aggressive. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. I'm pushing up because I ain't no bitch. Yeah, he's pushing up because he's no bitch. Yeah. At this point, you actually gotta bring your knife out. This whole time, yeah. Yeah, right. knife out to run faster. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. So she has a knife out. She's like full sprinting. And that means I'm I'm like super worried that she's gonna turn the corner and she's gonna find herself in a gunfight. And then if I have my gun out, I'm too far away to do anything about it. So therefore yeah. I, I should get my knife out, run to her ASAP. Even like right here, it's like she's already peeking a whole bunch of angles. And look how far away we are. At least three seconds away that she could die, or she get she can kill someone, and then we haven't contributed anything. We're not able to contribute anything to the gunfight. Yeah. Bro, just, just look at her, like, he's looking, looking at her. Bro. Look at what she's. Look at what she could be threatened by. So you was a fucking ladder. I mean, fucking rope. Why are you the rope? I mean, fucking. Oh, I should rope. check. Yeah, you just didn't check. Why are you the rope? Yeah, I should have cleared that first. Yeah, so this kind of just ties into like slicing the pie. Slice the pie. Clear all the rooms. What are you? <clears throat> snipers? Not that good with snipers. Okay, let me pause here. Let me ask you, what are you thinking about this round? Um, I was hoping to change it up by going uh, A. Okay. And um, and then I was also thinking that I was low on money because I only have four hundred, and that was uh about it. Okay. Anything else? Was that it? That was it. Okay. So you have an idea, yeah, you want to change things up, you want to split up your sentinels a bit, and we're designed to play on top of A sites, why is that? Um, I feel like on A site there's only really two places you need to watch when I feel like under, I get, like, pushed from way more angles. I feel like, at least. So, so what is your game plan? Here we're just sitting on, a, on top of A site, what, what is our plan? Um, I'm gonna push there to the left near stairs and watch that uh, hallway area. Okay. What else? Um, and that if no one ends up being A, I can rotate with the Reyna around to B. Okay. What else? And that's really it. Okay. So, I see two issues with this. Is that one... You never really pay attention to your your Reyna, that your Reyna is actually pushing pushing, pushing dish, right? Therefore, yeah. if, if your goal was to watch a hall, you have way more options than just standing on top of site. Right? You yeah. Could, you could you could stand um you, you could stand stairs like you said earlier, you could push into a hall and get an early peek and so that the new team has Less options because, like, right now, they don't have a lot of options. They could they can go through a hall or they can go through the door, right? So, like, yeah, you're, you've you sort of like given up a lot of map control because of that, yeah. And then at the start of the round, typically, I don't like to sit on top of a site unless I have like a really specific plan because mm -hmm. the, the, the best way to gain information is by getting as close to the barrier as possible, and then you, from there, you can decide, or oh, do I stay here to keep getting information? Or do I rotate back? Like you can always play ropes for the first five seconds, and then you can decide. Oh, okay, let me run back to top of a site because that's my original plan. But at least for the beginning five seconds of the round, you can gather information. Maybe you hear some footsteps. Maybe you hear like two, three, two, three people just like barging through a halls, and then you can relate to your team. Hey, they're, they're a, a like right away, and your team can rotate right away, as opposed to you being on top of a site that you're you're too far away that they can. Already open the door before you actually hear anything from a, from from a hall, right? Yeah. So by positioning here, you have less options. But the, and there's there's better positions that you can take advantage of, because you don't have to worry about uh, dish for for the entirety of that rain is alive and pushing dish. Yeah. Yeah. So. The other thing I want to talk about is that this is sort of a, a one and done position. And 
even if you tuck yourself to the left corner up, up on the top of the stairs that it's still a one and done position because you you don't have any way to fall back there's no escape plan yeah generally Yo. speaking hello so hello. so <clears throat> generally speaking you want to have you want to maximize your options you want to have many as many options as possible more options is generally better right yeah so having an escape plan having different escape routes so that you could escape one way or you can skip a different way and then it becomes more difficult for the enemy team to to, to hunt you down or track you down but they might call out oh sage ct spawn but from ct spawn you could be anywhere you can still be ct spawn you can go ropes you can go you can rotate away from ct spawn whatever yeah but she has generally have more options and right. um, and having an escape plan is like really important so for example if you if you hug the left wall and then you hear people coming from a hall you're basically forced to take that fight and the only way for you to escape that position is that you kill everybody pushing you from a hall yeah and that's not something you can always rely on you can't always rely on winning every single one v two one v three battle yeah the best case scenario you kill one but then the second person will just trade you out yeah or the other alternative is that um, the enemy team is smarter. They realize that no one's at hall, uh. no one's at at ropes, and no one's watching door. And the enemy team would just like take all this map control. Maybe they maybe they decide to ignore you and go to CT spawn, right? They just take all this map control away from from you and your team. And then suddenly, what you, what elo is this? Uh, I'm not sure. What elo is this? You really want to know? Yeah, this it would is help. iron. This is like iron three bottom of the. Oh, okay. So you really bad. don't need to be overthinking the positioning and stuff. Like they're not going to be thinking that. They're probably going to be thinking to run to spawn. So if I were to give you any suggestions on positioning, just make sure that you're not peaking them all at the same time. So like this position for iron is actually pretty good because in iron, I've been there before. Try, don't worry. Um, they're not gonna. They're not. They're not too concerned about clearing everything the more concerned about getting as much ground as possible so if you're able to just get one that's you that should be the goal like, yeah because with a you can see there's not much of a like a way to run out yeah yeah so if you just in this position your goal should just be get one like get yours so that's the phrase so just get a kill yeah so I would just be focusing in this situation. Don't focus on the escape plan. Don't focus on that. Just focus on getting that kill and potentially two, but just focus on getting one there. Yeah. I think actually yeah. I would disagree with that to some extent. I mean, it is important that you do get a kill in whatever position you're playing. <clears throat> At least that you try to get a kill. But I think it's more about like building good habits. And it's not a good habit to, to be constantly playing positions that are one and done. Unless you have some specific plan, like say you hold close to a shoddy and you know for sure that they're going to execute in some specific way that you can kill two, three, four people, or you can kill one person and, and then and then continue holding the same angle without fear of that you might get double swung. But in general, it's a better habit to be playing safer positions that you could still get one, but then you can also like not have to take another gunfight if you don't want, if you don't want to. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, it's it's a semi dangerous dangerous mentality to to think that oh I got one kill that's all I needed to do, especially on defense because it's is at the end of the day it's not just about you kill one and then make sure that each year your teammates kills one and then okay therefore you win the round, but it's about information it's about map control right and so far playing this position doesn't give you any of that the only thing it gets you is that yeah this is probably you can probably timing peek somebody as they're entering up the site, but if you don't timing pick timing pick anyone, if you just die here, then you you effectively gain zero value for your team. Yeah, which would be like worst case scenario, you get zero value, they basically get A site. Yeah, so I would say instead focus on positions that get you value, regardless if you get the kill or not. So whether that's gaining you value by gaining information for your team, you or your team, or gets you map control hold contest as much map control as possible instead of like like you can always like get one just by hiding in some random corner like holding close of a shotgun but 
But yeah, that's going to work in Iron, but as soon as you get out of Iron, that's not going to work anymore. And then, now you have to like actually learn how to play proper positioning. And that's going to be harder because it's higher like ELO. Right. Whatever. Yeah, let's continue with clip. Yeah, so, so we're playing here, and then we've outlined the, the trade offs. There, 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 be. Oh, I'm gonna just start at the starting bomb. There, 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 be. Yeah, I'll just be focusing in this position, just keeping your crosshair at head height. Yeah, keep it head height. Don't panic. Yeah, you got caught off guard that someone was a hall and like was walking a hall, and or maybe they, they full split, but you were too far away to, to hear the full sprint. But you kind of so you kind of panic a little bit here, and then you kind of sprayed while moving. Generally, I'll say this: the head height thing is probably the hardest thing because I just uh, subconsciously don't always take it back there. Yeah, it's a very it's a very it. habit. It's very much of a habit. So when you're an iron, so that is to be expected. So I would so recommend I... maybe going going to death match. So just run a bit of death match, keeping your um keeping it in mind that you need to keep your uh. Cross there at head height, and then you'll be fine. Yeah. Also, go into the range. That also helps. It's just working on it, because you can't just expect to all of a sudden have good aim. Like, we've all been there. Don't worry. It's just about building habits. Yeah, I agree with that. Deathmatch, practice range. Right, continue. All right. Can Fortune. Oh, my mic. Time to Yo, you look like your in your mouth, kiddo. Uh, uh, uh. Oh. But I'm gonna go. I'm five. Five and a half to be specific. Dang, bro. Yeah. Oh, There's definitely a. No, I don't think so. I think there'd be. Spike planted. Uh. Even Hopefully though they planted it, I still think they're to your, your teammates bait there. Watching this spot. What do you think about taking those ropes here? I was, uh, for one, really worried that someone was going to be sitting on the end of it expecting it. Um, and then I was hoping... That I would all so there was like two things. I was sad. I was worried that there was going to be someone sitting at the end of it, and I was also um, hoping that I'd be able to get behind them and get a pick or two. Okay, so you're hoping to go get a flank from ropes, well, mm -hmm. not, not from ropes, but by, by taking the ropes. Anything else? Are you thinking about? Um, no, not really. Yeah. So two things that one that. Taking this ropes here is, is probably going to be too slow because like the bomb is already planted. All five people are already like on site or so set up, whatever, post plant. That you need to get to the site ASAP. That you probably don't even have time to make a play like this. Maybe you kill one, maybe you kill two, but by the time you get to the site, the bomb's probably going to explode, right? Yeah. So I think instead you should look to make the fastest possible rotation so that you can you can actually try to help your team defuse the bomb. Yeah. Yeah, and the second thing I'm thinking is that you have res this round. So instead of going off on a risky flank by yourself, instead, this would be a good round to play with your team and then look to get value, guaranteed value, with your res. Yeah, I don't actually think I use the res, which sucks. Yeah, so maybe your Cypher gets to, like, instead of, like, here, instead of taking ropes, originally you're, you're following your Cypher, and you're aware that you're following Cypher because you started walking when you see him walking, then you you should think that if the Cypher gets to a gunfight, I can help trade him out, and if he dies, I can help res him, right? Yeah. Alternatively, I can do the same thing with, with my other teammates. Like, I see this Reyna here, who's already on dish. Yeah, on dish. That uh, there's actually probably not even, not even a point to me walking here because my Reyna's already pushed up dish. Yeah, so there's no chance no one's going to be there. Yeah, so all, basically all signs point to just full sprint with your knife out, get close to your arena, and then be a part of the retake ACP, and then look to get value with your res ACP. Yeah. 
Yeah. So yeah, Watch I think that would be the better play than trying to go in this this flank, which is going to take too long because you you want to stay quiet because you don't know if someone's there, which slows you down even further. Rest. And if that guy was smarter, he wouldn't like not pay attention to ropes. Uh, oh my God! They're holding a corner. Oh my. And then I did something and look away. Yeah, so that's just unfortunate timing. But really, it's just like, even if you survive this here, like, even if you kill this person, like, the bomb's gonna blow up and then you're just gonna lose the round. Yeah. What? Oh! Oh, yeah, I forgot. My fiend is too large, guys. Did you come to your team? You hear one of the A orb? Yeah, they're on B. That's not a guarantee though, you hit someone getting an earwork. Yo, say you play you play a lot? At this point you should you should consider going back to A. Yo, right yeah. Down. Oh never mind. Oh now, now you should go camp the bomb. Right below you said. Spike down in, uh, in the tunnels. Enemy down. Phil, wait, Posse, let me ask you, what are you thinking? Um, I was thinking. Um, I think I what did Cypher use his yeah. ultimate? I'm not sure, yes. but I know. Yeah, I was gonna say I remember seeing that uh, both of them were over a day. Yeah. So, and yeah. um, what else? What's he thinking? That I could probably go push and kill them. You gotta push and kill them, okay? Well, what else are you thinking? That was basically it. Okay, so you had a idea, like, yeah, you know exactly where I went, uh, where the enemies are, that there was this breach by himself in, inside CT spawn. You pushed, you killed them, great. Now, you know that the chamber was, was B, originally B stairs and the arena was A sides. Right, so knowing that, that means that they. They're more likely to go A sites, although technically they have to get bomb first, so it depends where bombs dropped. And then the second thing is that you know for sure that you can get a super safe res off because no one can possibly go to uh, arcade. Except for maybe the chamber if he, if he goes B tunnels. Right, so, so it would have been safer to walk and res so we can have a 5v2 instead of a. Yeah, so one op one option is that you can go for a super safe res, and that will almost like sort of like guarantee the bomb win. Mm -hmm. Or the other option is just to play the bomb, find where the bomb is, and you know that where the, where the last two enemies are, you can like set up in positions that make it really difficult for them to uh, grab the bomb. Yeah. Right. So instead of instead of a, a simplified view, of like yeah, you want to go go kill them, but Instead of just the thinking about, oh, I need to go get kills, just think about, what's the objective? What other ways can I get value besides killing? Oh, I can res. Oh, I can, like, I can prevent the enemy from even touching the bomb. If they don't, if they can't plant the bomb, you automatically win without killing anybody, right? Yeah. So, don't just think about that you want to kill the enemy team, but think about other ways that you can gain value for your team. Right? Yeah. Any questions so far? No, not really. Okay. Let me hear you, Cypher. Oh, we had Spike in the tunnel. I'm gonna hear you up, Cypher. <laughs> 30 seconds left. Gun here. No, that's a gun. Yeah, be careful with being by yourself. He gets his. Oh, alright. Like 10 more seconds, we got what this. What happened? 10 seconds left. The team just needs to survive. We got this, we won, we won, we won. Wait. Oh, they actually got bombed. And then, yeah, and then we get pushed. Okay. This is the round, I think. This might be. Can someone get thank you?
gonna be. Hey, Palsy, let me see what are you thinking. Um, what am I thinking? Um, probably just go, go B site and support the team. Okay, what, That's, if, what if the team goes A? Um, rotate with the rest of the team. Okay, so you play A for retake? Um, yeah. Okay. That's basically it. I mean... Okay. I just told him my ass cheeks that they were coming from behind. Can you give me up, Sitch? Oh, another one behind, another one silver behind. I was about to go down. Again, the the aunts you your wall shenanigans. Yeah. I think you know like a chin up there is that uh the one behind. As soon as I hear my sky, like, kill someone again, like, you want to heal her because she's, she's in a gunfight, your team probably took some damage once it gets healed. Another thing, too, is that uh, she's still playing aggressive at Arcade. So, after this wall goes up, the point of this wall is to stop the push at B-Stairs. Yeah. And you no longer need to be here, like, so throwing the wall, because you have two other people, your Viper and your Cypher, with the trips and the Viper wall, right? Yeah. And now a Sage wall, like... That's already like a hard stop on the enemy push here on B stairs. Yeah, so there's no reason to be watching it. So your your resources are better spent helping your sky, healing her, maybe designed to push B arcade and make you mess make your rest of your team feel safe so that your, your cypher doesn't have to watch Tara or your Viper doesn't have to watch Arcade. Instead they can just yeah. focus their efforts on B stairs. Meanwhile you and your sky get value elsewhere. Yeah. Bora <laughs> Bora. You want to play? Let's play. Nowhere to run. What do you think about this wall? What was I thinking? I was yeah. thinking that uh, they're probably going to be expecting me to do the same thing. I'll wall up here, go up on my wall. I'll peek the top of it and be able to get um, a pick or two. So you're going to wall like this and stand on top of the wall? Yeah. Okay. What and then hope thinking? I can get a kill. Okay. What else? And that was basically it. Okay, so we're going for another wall play. Yeah. If you so that's dumb looking back on it. If your goal is to play off this wall and you have a spec in your hands, you don't really have the luxury of like peeking here. Or even here. Or Thank here. You. Like all of these are like mid to long range angles that uh, they have a uh, yeah, you could find yourself in, you're just gonna lose the fight. Yeah. Yep, I'm just like that. Okay. Um, yeah, and then I get sniped. Okay. I'll just give you good. Oh, yeah, this is one of our Cypher one AFK. <sighs> so, well, that was the last round. Okay. So, unfortunately, the entire half we did not use our, our research res. Yeah. And then here our Cypher went AFK to eat dinner. Ain't that a big deal? You should keep your gun out though, this entire time. Here you have your knife out. Like, yeah, you, you feel semi safe because your teammates nearby, but you don't yeah, know. Yeah, but they could always peek. Yeah, exactly. They could always peek, right? Careful about pushing by yourself with your team. Make sure you're not alone in pushing. Help your Viper right here. Like, so, like. Right here, I see my Viper is getting stunned. Then that's a signal to me that oh, I want to be ready so that if someone were to challenge my Viper, which is likely because they just stunned, if they were to peek, peek uh, B stairs and then start fighting a Viper, that I want to make sure that I can help my Viper by helping her, meaning yeah. that. I, I start to trade her out. 
that's kind of what I'm expecting until she gets into a safer position. Okay, so now she's safe. Now the sun is worn off. Now she's sitting next to you. You can actually come to your team that uh, still has used both darts. And then at this point, now you have a semi dilemma. So that your team is set up to execute into B. But now you know for sure that someone is flanking behind you. The chamber is flanking behind you. So, what are you thinking in this situation? In this situation, I just called out to my sky that chamber was behind us. In that we either had to all push chamber and kill him and rotate A, or we had to full commit to um, B. Yeah. Yeah. I and agree. that B. B would be better, honestly. Or no, A would, because we could rotate and our Rana could get out for E, basically, because she's arcade, so. Yeah. Yeah, so you're definitely right that you have two options here. One is that you hard commit to the sites before the flank can, like, before the chamber's flank can get value, or you guys decide to turn around and all go toward A and deal with the flanker and then maybe push toward A. Yeah. But definitely, you don't want your team to be in a sort of in-between where some people commit and don't, and other people don't commit, or or someone decides to go off and fight the chamber as a 1v1 while the rest of the team commits, right? Whatever yeah. you guys decide, you want to do it together. Yeah. Okay. Let's see how we play it. So it looks like your team decides to commit. Oh, don't, oh, don't watch this. Don't watch this. Don't so you just gotta stand still, stand still, and don't rely on right clicks unless like you're like point blank shotgun range. Yeah. And then after reload, like here, like still moving, still moving, still moving. So a little bit so far has been mechanics where like, when make sure you're you're standing still, make sure your crosshair is head level, make sure you're always aiming for chest to neck to head height, as opposed yeah. to sort of sort of just like. Spraying and hoping for the best. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is, I remember this, my friends decided to join my Discord call and talk about homework. Yeah. I was mad about yeah. this. I tried to call him on Snapchat, he didn't answer. I remember, he did What's say first like... page, okay. I was mad at them, I'm saying. CJ, the band assignment's actually fun to do. For the snow days. You literally just make your own song on Chrome Lab Music Maker. What is it? Like, I do that sometimes. And I ended up leaving fun. later, but I should have left earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah, my yeah. FPS, my the FPS decides to kill myself, oh, okay. kill itself. And I ended I up. Cool. Yeah, and then I end up because I was mad. Maybe for other site, yeah. Viper just walled this site. What about choppy? My god. Oh, I can't really comment much if uh, the video keeps I'll say, yeah. Uh, after I joined the Discord call, it got a little laggy and then it fixed itself, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. That's not good. Their Viper ulted on it too. That is fine. Plus, it's a little bit too low. I think you have bomb, right? You can just plant. Rhino, oh, wait, no, wait, no, wait. Me. Bomb is down. That's my, I thought the serious? cypher was still here for some reason. So I thought you were going with the cypher. That's my. Last player standing. Yeah, he's Again, like, stupidly okay. taking a long guys fight with a spectre. Yeah. Something I'm great at. Well, I don't have Why the full the lead to Discord. <laughs> I'm a fuck. Jewish people. I was getting a vando, I guess. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. No. Yeah, my. Yeah, breach kill too. The chamber, chamber and breach. No way we lose Spike again. Ping you. <laughs> yeah, I got pinged and then I got. I don't so, know. What's the word? Run around here. You said to stop. 
What are you, what are you thinking here? I was thinking um, Sky has the uh, um, rope angle. I have this angle. Um, and I was hoping I could at least get a kill on one, hopefully, like, chamber or someone, because I saw his teleport there. Okay. So I was hoping I could get, get a pick, go back up to top A, and just hopefully wait until they either kill my cypher and rotate, or commit to A. Well, and then I get pinged, and then I they, freak out. If they kill the cypher, why would they rotate? Uh, that's just what I kind of, my brain was thinking. Because, I mean, that's what I would do, so. So, they killed, so, let's see what they kill. Killed you, Reyna. Oh, my God. Hey. Then it kills your right Viper. There. I'll say yeah. we're attacking, not, I'm then, slow. Yeah. Then it kills your Viper. And now, now your Cypher's alone, right? So, in this situation, you should basically, like, get to your Cypher ASAP. That he's alone, there's two people pushing him, the chamber and the breach, that he needs help. And then this like, the idea that you're gonna get a kill, you could get a kill here in A site, but then you're still not gonna be looking at the bomb. I'll say it doesn't matter. And then even, maybe we decide to wait a little bit, okay, fine, for a few seconds. Then we see a, a silver dart that tells me that there's a third person here that he's probably on you know, somewhere ropes or sand or something based on where the, the arrow came from. So that um, now there's like more and more people coming to a, a hall. That there's more and more people stacked toward your cycle. Your cycle gets is getting more and more pressured. That you, he really needs help ACP. So now, like staying site is not really like a good idea. Yeah. And then here, like you, you think that you can only try to avoid the ping, which is no, because the ping's too far. Instead, you should just like go with the idea that I want to help a cipher. So let me just start walking into a hall, and then maybe that that silver dot can give some false information. That it will it will indirectly clear sight but it doesn't clear a hall so then you have a better chance of having a flank by pushing it to a hall yeah okay but first she pings us so now we know exactly where we are now we're stuck in a dilemma because now we're not really able to push because they know they know we're coming well at least we're not able to push more easily But, okay. Hey, Paul, say, let me ask you, what are you thinking? Um, I was hoping one of them would run. Like, that my sky would, um, like, bait him, basically, and that I'd be able to get a kill. And then we could both play off that, but... Yeah, so it's a little too simplistic that you, you still too focus too much on, like, kills. Instead, you should think that we're, we're in a 3v5, and now we're in a 2v5, and we know for sure that there's people around A... And then most likely, the other remaining 4th and 5th player on the enemy team are also going to rotate and come toward A. So, the longer that we take, the longer that we just sit on site waiting for something to happen, the harder it is going to, is going to be to actually win the round. Or the harder it is going to be to actually make a play here. Right? So, yeah. in other words, like, clock is ticking, right? So, instead, yeah. we should realize that, in, in general, when you're in a disadvantage situation, you find yourself in 2v5, that you want to speed up your engagement. You want to take early engagements as much as possible before the enemy team has time to set up. Yeah. So if you if you were to just wait on wait on sites, what's gonna happen is that all five enemy enemy players are just gonna swarm swarm you and they you're gonna get double, triple, quadruple peaked and then there's no way for you to really win those engagements, win those situations unless you just like kill all two to four people in a row at the same yeah. time. Right, so basically, you should be looking to like accelerate your play, make a play ACP, and probably decide to just push into a hall ACP before the other two players can can fully rotate. Yeah, and maybe you one option you can ask your sky to to dog you you push off, off off play off the dog, or you just like you and your sky just push together and hope you can win the two v two inside a hall. Yeah, and then click bomb and then go from there. Yeah. Right? Any questions so far? No. Okay.
and the enemy team is fine. They don't really need to push you. They can just like keep you trapped here, basically forever. Until it's like a, either a good opportunity for them to double, triple, quadruple peak, or if they don't oh, the pick at all, because the bomb is down. So, good kills, but yeah, at this point, like, being surrounded, right? It, you, it doesn't matter, yeah. You have to worry about so many angles just by waiting him, because now you have two people A-Hall, you have one person who's pushed out CT spawn, you have one person who's like sand. Uh, actually, he was dropped. Like, there's so many angles to do with because you just kind of waited too long. You want to play? Let's play. Okay. Here. So pausing here. Seems like you have this idea that you wanna you wanna hold spawn. You wait for the pushes, which is fine. Makes sense, but. If your goal was to do that, I would just like hard commit with a judge. Especially yeah. if, you, if you're going to make a wall play like this. So instead of like uh, spending a bunch of money on, on an Odin, you can just buy a judge, which is like a fraction of the price. And you're, you'll probably be more deadly because you have the one shot potential times seven. Yeah. He's going to see you against the kill. Oh, maybe not. Well, I think you probably could have reloaded, but no big deal. Yeah, again, you uh, the spawning is not necessarily a bad thing, though, and again, you just you keep moving this whole time. Like, oh, yeah, you're moving, 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 moving. I should have just stopped and just. Yeah. Main. I think on my I, I have school so when I don't have school. I I had I didn't have school yesterday, but I had school today and I'm gonna have school the rest of the week. Same play, different place. Yeah, for the team is smarter, they're gonna realize this is the same play. And either they're just gonna push somewhere else, they're gonna stack somewhere else. And they're just gonna let you stay behind this wall or whatever. Go up there, right there. Spike down. And again, this is, like, this is like another passive play. While your team, like, you see your team is like pushing into A. You see your Reyna, your, your Viper. Now the other person, your Sky, is like already died, dropped bomb, right? So the round is like being dictated without you. you you're getting zero value while the round is being di dictated somewhere else. Yeah. Well, here there's, there's not even a point to walk in because there's no way anybody can be in the hall based on your Vipers on site and your Rain is on sand. Yeah. So, you should just, you should just full sprint your Good hall. shit, bro! Be in position to trade out your Reyna. Reyna's gonna go up both pretty soon. Maybe not, maybe she's gonna CT. Get for the CT to the Yeah, still moving. I watched those. Bro. Get you watched that because of your aim, just because you're, you're not... No standing still. Friend lost an eye. Yeah. Because because he has his he has this thing on the crouch key, so it's just like auto crouching. So he oh. oh. Ain't no way, bro. What? Should we go? Wait, let's go. Let's rotate with the fucking uh, ropes. You go first and they're definitely down. waiting for us there. No Look at you. Oh. Okay, he's in. Just kill your sky. Thank you, Poppy. Gun here. Heal me, Sky. Heal up, squad. Welcome to yeah, my yeah. world. Freeloading. Let's just go B. Okay, yeah, good idea. Go B. You should have solved Vector all today. Probably jump the area. One enemy remaining. Rotate. 
30 seconds left. Spike, I have to start reloading. Keep on swimming, swimming, yes, swimming. I'm gonna fight them with you, Reyna. Come out of here. Fine. Help Reyna. Help Reyna, ACP. We're looking for him. I found him. Uh, maybe not. Okay, now you know he's beast is, now you have to set up for the crosshair if you're right Hey, you like that but, movement uh, right now? <laughs> you peek way through I ended up peeking and... For this situation, you know for sure he's beast stairs. You see a right boot to your left, and then she's getting in position. Set up a crossfire. And then all you have to do is just play the crossfire. Sit there and wait. Yeah, just sit there and wait. And then instead, I decide to push. And, yeah. So, hey, you like that speaking, movement right now? You don't want to give one one to enemy team, especially if you're... Okay. In an advent advantageous yeah, position, or you're up in the What? the fuck? Breathe. Probably just run and go and visit this guy. Then you can always go back to the position if you really wanted to. Are we just coming from behind? Off your feet. Keep your eyes up there, Cypher. Cool. I mean, Reyna. Yeah, they really want to push this wall. On site. Good attempt. I think you probably shouldn't have been there. On site. Like if you just walks, you'd be a higher chance of actually catching a guard. If you were smarter, you would have just hood you. Viper's one hit. Yeah. Your duty is not over. Oh, let's go! That is. Viper's one hit. Your duty is not over. Oh, let's well, It's unfortunate that this guy was just hiding here because, uh. Your arena was sand. Like run around here, she's picking sand. Viper's one hit. We had no Your idea that the was here, but generally speaking, you don't want to push too far. Viper's one hit. Like just get the res off, get your gun outs, and get ready just in case that someone is like waiting for the res. Yeah. You're, like you're pushing farther while the res animation is going on. Oh, let's go! On one fucking HP. Whoa. Vandal's better I... than Phantom, dog. You want to play? Let's play. <gasps> it's just angle, and that's why Vandal's play better than Phantom, dog. And we do more far away fights anyway. Oh, they're all CT, like all of them are CT. A spike is down. Spike down A. I have a spike. Enemy defender spawn. Yeah, again, the rounds being dictated by you. Yeah. I do the same things over and over. Oh, right up there. Wait, what? What do you mean, right up there? Like, uh, on, main, on site. Right upon Cypher's back. Pretty sure this is gonna stick it. Oh, let's go! Oh, well, maybe not. Right, Cypher, right, right! Oh, good enough. Thank you, guys. Wow. Damn. It's kind of weird. It's like chicken and some like Asian uh, noodles. Come to the team, right? Hold on. Oh, you can actually just go away right now. He's up there with a shotgun. But now you should definitely go B because your, your team's committing to B. Uh, Viper hit 140. How did I not get banned? I thought I would definitely get banned. Because you were crouching. I was 
the, 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 the crouching way do not be okay. Do you put your headphones on? One enemy remaining. Up your sky. Just being very aggressive. Thank you. Yeah, I put my AirPods on my uh, ship. Most guys play AFK. I was just trying to hide behind that yeah. Uh, so here I was actually running to kill him and I remember that that's, that's not their spawn. No. I like up B this side. Like I'm gonna go back to the Bro, they're not walking this because we never we've never gone over here. <laughs> Could you drop spike safer? Let's go, I got chamber. No, no, go, go, keep, go. Commit B, commit B. I'm gonna use my ult. Should I use my ult? Okay, G, G, press G. Off your feet! <laughs> All right, he wasted his ult, he wasted his ult. Oh, you don't want to push this deep. Just pushing that by yourself. Okay, Marina is with us. No. Now we can push. Enemy in defender is fine. Enemy remaining. Spike. Oh, they were not good enough. GG, GG. Oh, Somehow. Somehow. Alright, so any questions so far? Um. No, not really. Okay. I mean. So, not really. So let's go to these notes here. So, in most of the rounds, a lot of the issues that I see consistently in a lot of these rounds is that your crosshair is, is not a place where you expect enemies to be. Like, your crosshair is always on the ground, or it's like middle of like nowhere, or you're not clearing all your angles because your crosshair is just not where you expect the enemy to possibly be. So, yeah. number one thing for sure is that you need to keep your crosshair like where an enemy can possibly be and where you expect them to be. And that's at the ground, not at some random box, but instead like yeah. around corners, right? Mm -hmm. And then tying into this is actually Blue Point on Five that you should work in your, your mechanics a bit more. That a lot of times that because your your crosshair is, is not where it is, that you have to like sort of like flick to the head or flick to the body where it needs to be. Instead, just keep your crosshair at chest, neck, or head height at all times. And also stand still when you're shooting. There's many, many rounds, or many, many engagements where you you sort of just like spray at somebody and you're moving and you have to like spend an entire clip and then basically like hope for the best because of that. Because you're basically just like spraying and playing and not, and not really focus on actually aiming at them. Yeah. In some situations, it makes sense because your, your defense with an Ares or an Odin, or whatever, but at the very least, you shouldn't be moving because, because of how in it makes your gun. Like, like yeah. as soon as you start moving, then your bullets just like go all over the place. Your bullets like go into the sky, basically. And if you don't have those guns, like if you don't have Ares or Odin, if you have uh, like a Phantom, for example, then instead you should try to burst more and try to counter strafe in between your bursts instead of constantly spraying all the time. Yeah. Right, and and onto that is is the is the gunplay. So like many times you you buy a specter and you or, or like you are not really playing to your your gun strengths because you buy a specter and then you peek into mid to long range angles or you commit to a long to mid, mid to long range gunfight, right? Instead, yeah. If you have a close range gun, make sure that you you only take close range engagements or whenever possible. Only take a close range engagement. Yeah. Alright, and then uh, back to number two. Try not to repeat the same play over and over and over. There's too many rounds that you make the exact same play where you have some idea, you're going to wall this thing, and then you're just going to play off the wall. You're going to sit on top I'll of the wall. That's, that's, I mean, I did that the same thing for like half the rounds, which is not good. Yeah, way too, many, way too often. And it's to the point where the enemy even like shows you some body language that, yeah, they're, they're starting to pick up onto it. Because the first time, okay, great, you caught someone off guard. The second time, now they're actively looking at where you would be standing on top of the wall. Second time, third time, fourth time, right? Uh-huh. So try not to repeat the same play over and over. Try to switch things up. 
don't just think that I need to be playing B, I need to make a play off this wall, or I need to be camping T spawn, I need to camp T spawn with this wall and then wait for someone to push, right? Try to be yeah. more predictable. Like you have a whole map to work with. Don't even think that you're even tied to B site. Think that oh I can I can go A site. I can push A site. I can go I can go A hall. I can push A hall. I can play super aggressive and then when I go dish and then I see my Reno, she's playing aggressive, I'm playing aggressive with her. I'm gonna join her. Right? Mm. Yeah. So leading into bullet point number three is try to play aggressive whenever you see your teammates playing aggressive. If you see a teammate pushing, you should push with them. Don't just like sit sit back, play passive and and let the round be dictated by your teammates. Instead, like take control, right? Like be a part of the action as much as possible. Yeah. And fourth bullet point is that don't think just about kills. Like the game is more than just kills. There's other ways to win besides killing the enemy. Right? Think about the objective, right? Planting the bomb, defusing the bomb, ensuring that they don't plant the bomb, ensuring that they don't defuse the bomb. Think about other aspects like information or map control. That would be that would be more beneficial to your team than getting one kill. And then probably dying after that kill. All right. Any questions so far? No, not not really. Just I see what I need to work on now. I mean, okay, okay. So onto the minor issues. These are not as prominent, but probably some stuff that you should still try to fix. So one is that your your mini map. Try to make it full size and non centered, so that's easy to see. There's a lot of, a lot of information that you can get from the mini map, and it's really crucial that the mini map be like as easy to see to, to get all the information as, as quickly and fast as possible and as, as much as possible as well whether that's like where your teammates are positioned what where, where they're standing what they're looking at what they see what they don't see etc so make your mini map easier to see and try to gain and absorb as much information as possible from the mini map yeah Second bullet point is try to be as specific as possible with your comms. Try not to just say there be, but instead say two, at least two B stairs, or say breach stunning B, B stairs, or say Sova no no shock darts, right? Or Sova recon whatever, right? Yeah. So for the second one, that's be specific as possible. Is there like a thing I can use to learn the maps? Because uh, like I really don't know. In game, if you just Press M, it brings up a map and has all the callouts listed. I know, but is there like a website I could go to that's like out of the game that I could look at and study? Uh, yeah, there's uh, I can send you a link. There's a whole bunch of them. You yeah, okay, because well. I think I can work on that without actually playing. Yep. Okay. All right, you can continue. So, third bullet point is try to press tab more often. This kind of feeds into like building up your awareness that you want to be collecting as much information as possible so that you can make the best possible decision. So if you realize that your your team is buying, therefore you should buy with them, or you realize that, oh, this teammate, the Cypher, he's like super rich, he has 9K, oh, I, sh I should ask him for a drop, not just ask my Viper who barely who, who can barely afford a Phantom, that yeah. instead of asking her, asking her to drop, who asking Andrew to drop, ask specifically, hey, Cypher, can you drop me, right? So it's like try to play around like what loadouts that your team has and and what economy that your team has yeah and and then into that is that adjusting your play style based on your teammates loadout so that if you see that someone has a big gun you want to be playing around that person with the big gun as much as possible so make sure that that gun does not fall into enemy hands especially if the enemy is, is on eco round yeah Right, and then yeah, next bullet point explicitly you reach a teammate to drop you. And then the last bullet point is fly supply. And this kind of ties into just like general mechanics and cross area placement. That many times you, you kind of just like swing into an area or you 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 just like kind of just W in, into a place and then you don't really like check all your angles, right? Instead, like you want to check angles one at a time. Make sure you clear every single angle one at a time. Yeah.
right? Any questions yeah. so far? No, just kind of absorbing. Okay. Thinking. But yeah, no, no questions. All right. Well, if there's nothing else, then I'll stop here. Uh, just let me know if you want any more audios in the future. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that I was actually really helpful. Um. Because I feel like if I would have reviewed my own VOD without someone doing it for me, I would have overlooked a lot of the things I did as just normal, I feel. Yeah. I think uh, because you're an iron, like, you can easily get get out of iron just by working your mechanics. Yeah. And I listed it as like one or two bullet points, but I wanted to focus more about other things, like like how to think throughout a round. And yeah, what things to think about throughout the round? Yeah. All right. Yeah, I mean, thank you. That was really helpful. Um, thank you for doing it. Obviously. Um. All right. No problem. All right.